Mus is a magician with the refs. Hey, David. Hey, buddy. How, How are you? Good to see you. It's like a game within the game. I'm glad you're mic'd. Yes. No swear words. Oh, no, that'll be good. He's the best I've seen. I've been around some great good He's the best at getting right to the line <laughs> and stopping. No! Mike, help him! Help him! I would be guessing. I'd be guessing. All right, okay. The best. You know, everything you do with your players, with media, with referees, there's got to be a purpose behind everything. They're doing it again! That's how he got hit! But then it really gets down to, hey, they're human beings, and they want to be treated a certain way, and they want to be talked to a certain way as well. You have one job. Your job is to win that game. And this referee, if they have a view of what's going on in the game, and it's different than yours, because your view is all you care about is winning, all he cares about is trying to get the calls right for both teams. No, Mike! I think all of us as grown adults don't want to be disrespected in the workplace. At times he'll run around and you know, throw his hands at the crowd, but he doesn't go to a ref and throw his hands and do all this in front of them. How are you? Good luck tonight. I'm thank doing you. fine. How about you? Good. Good thing. Hey, Michael. Hey, How, How are you? Good, Good to see you. you. The refs have refed enough games, and I've seen my dad coach enough games where they know he's not an easy person to deal with once the time is ticking. Mike! Mike! trying to guard him. We're not even trying to guard the guy. I got a great learning lesson early on in my career. I was working for the Orlando Magic, and I was complaining all game about the referees. I was sitting behind the bench. Uh, right in front of me was Coach Chuck Daly. After the game, he told me the next day he wanted me to chart every call that the referees made, and then he wanted me to tell him what percentage they got right. And it was about 99% of the calls that they made were right. And then he said, quit chirping behind the bench. He's smart enough to know who he is, and he's smart enough to admit when he's wrong. You know, yeah, I might have missed that call. You know, you were right on that one. Greg, watch Watson push off. Oh, you know what can help us? What, me shutting up? No, 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 no. He gets up into him, plays good defense, and takes the push and goes to the floor. Okay. My dad's lesson that he told me was, if you are constantly complaining or barking, it falls on deaf ears. He never shot it! He never shot the ball! He never shot it! And my dad felt like you could one time really make a stand, but you had to make sure that you were 100% right on a missed call. That was why he got bumped on the drive. On the drive! And so I learned all these lessons from guys, and as I've gotten older, I certainly feel like my reputation with referees is much better than it was maybe when I was younger. I'm gonna be normal. Oh, you will? Yeah, but they'll only use what's Oh, oh got it, got it, got it. I was hoping they'd use everything. No, no. He's gonna joke around with them all the way up to tip, <laughs> and he truly means all that. He's not, he, it's not fake, you know, to help him in the game. Huh? I just saw it. Hit him with two hands. He got pushed! But between those lines, it's all business, and, you know, what's said is said, and what's done is done, and that's just kind of part of the game. Look, Nevada's not very well liked in San Diego. Like, we know it, and uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. We took what they thought was theirs, and that was the Mountain West, and, and uh, we are the best team in the Mountain West by far. Total normal travel day for us. Nothing out of the ordinary. No Pacific Beach, nobody's going to check out La Jolla Rec where I played. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're treating it as if we're in Laramie. 
we've come down here and not played well two years in a row. I think our guys are older, we're wiser, and I think they know they have some repay to do based on the last couple of years of being embarrassed down here. I think it's going to be a battle. Everyone knows you've got a circle around your chest. You've got a target on your chest. Everywhere you go, there's a, a group of fans meeting us when we get off the bus, you know, heckling us and getting on us. We understand that when the Wolfpack go on the road, it's, it's the opposing team's Super Bowl, and that really hasn't changed uh, all year. Food section mad, boy. Food section mad. I'll be mad too. <laughs> It is unbelievable when you walk in somebody else's home. You can feel it. You can feel a difference. I've never experienced it at this level. And we have to expect that. We tell our guys, expect to have a line around the building. If you lose, it's the court is getting stormed. The Lobos upset the Wolfpack as the students rush the floor. So we are not playing the normal team in the Mountain West. We are playing the best version of that team every night the best version of their crowd. I mean, I was watching games last night, and it's like, oh, they got about 2,000 less than when we were there, and they're going to have about 4,000 more when we are there. And our guys know it, too. Because of the expectations and because the pack has met the expectations to this point, the pressure every time the ball goes up in a regular season game is crushing. Every game feels like a playoff game. You guys got to sit in the stands. You got to bend your knees, and you got to sit in the stands and work on defense. And then everybody crashed the defensive boards. The ACC is the ACC. The Big 12 is the Big 12. I, I get all that. Only thing we can control is the teams that we play. I know Coach Muss, and it's really simple with him. Anytime, any place, anyone. He he's not going to back down. Too much walking around. Pick up the pace. The student section's nuts. They're, the student section is right next to the Nevada bench. They're loud. It's close. They try to engage the players in, in, in talks. Uh, this stadium is steep, and, and, it, and it's so they're right on top of you. Start using your voices. We're going one hour. It's not that hard. Let's go harder. This is a huge game. Let's go. For us, we're playing really good, but when the ball gets thrown up, their winning streak at home doesn't mean anything, and how we're playing doesn't mean anything. It's just two teams going after each other for 40 minutes. Hey, go three, go three, go three. Good, good, Caleb. Hey. Guys, if, if, if Watson is in this quadrant between the elbows, you don't want to play him straight up, right? You might as well send him left right here if he's in this area, right? Just weak him. You control where he goes. Don't just stand there straight right here with your toes to our rim. Go ahead and shade him right over here, right where Coach Walters is. If we make the NCAA tournament, we'll be three straight NCAA tournaments. I don't think there's any monkey on anyone's back. Find windows, find windows of the zone. We're proving that we're a really good program in the Mountain West, and we have been now for three years. Everybody be game ready. Meet them all. Push it. Good, good. Stay behind, DC. We've only played there twice, so if we lose four straight years, then it'll be a problem, but we'll see what happens. There's no question with both my sons, uh, it continually comes into my mind is, you know, what would my dad be teaching his grandkids about the game? And what would he say if he was sitting in the stands? And basketball meant everything to my dad, so I know how proud he would be. We're here at the SBCA for our internship and uh, for HDFS, which is Human Development and Family Studies. Caleb, deeper voice. I nailed it. No! <laughs> so the SPCA has been around since 1998. We're actually the first no-kill animal shelter in northern Nevada. We're so excited to have the Martin twins on board. It's going to be great exposure for the SPCA, and we love collaborating with the Wolf Pack. So today we're going to have the Martin twins learn a little bit about animal behavior training. They're going to be helping us out with everything from walking the dog to marketing to content development. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, she likes you. It's a good thing for us to kind of get, you know, have a way to get away from basketball, take your mind off that, 
and okay. just it's also therapy too at the same time it helps you out and um, puts you in a different place rather than always focusing on basketball 24 7. So we have our big activity yards up here and it shows that every dog or cat has their own personality and we talked about how like you can't really take them home and think you're gonna mold them they are who they are come here Oh, now you want to play. Yes, you do. He's a typical yeah, girl. He's a typical girl. Yes, you're a good girl. Yes, hi, hi. Oh. I mean, it's awesome for people who don't know us. Uh, we are, you know, dog people, cat people. We just, you know, we love animals. Who is a six-year-old pit bull, and he's the perfect example of why pit bulls are actually the nicest dogs around, um, because he's friendly and he really wants to be your buddy. And they won't ask for any pictures. I mean. I might take a picture with them so I can take so I can have it for myself. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just cool to just kind of you know interact with you know animals like that or just you know just love them. They just want attention and to be brought home when I want to take home. To be honest with you, so uh, I'm, hopefully I can. Uh, obviously, I know it's probably not a good idea now, but uh, I'll take all of them if I could. We're gonna make him coach's bag. Here's coach's bag. Right there. Coach's bag, leave it here. <laughs> My, Michael Moss. One of the most humanizing things about Eric Musselman is his relationship with his family. Do you have Cody's email? Yeah, I have him saved right here. OK. And so to have Michael on the staff, I think, is a great internal redemption, in a way, for Eric. and. Also, Muss remembers how much it meant to share basketball with his dad, and so I think that's a huge component of sharing it with Michael. There's no question with both my sons, uh, it continually comes into my mind is, you know, what would my dad be teaching his grandkids about the game? And what would he say if he was sitting in the stands? And basketball meant everything to my dad, so I know how proud he would be uh, to watch somebody like Matthew or Michael play ball. Over the top! Red shooter, high hand, high hand. I lived for basketball. I played basketball. I, we watched basketball on TV. That's all we watch at my dad's house is you come home from school, there's a game on, whether it be old or new, it doesn't matter. You're always watching basketball. And I mean, I was eating cereal out of a bowl that was like, it had a basketball print on it. Like, I, I ate out of basketball bowls every day. So it's literally like, it's all I ever imagined growing up, and I, I can't imagine my life without it, really. Words really can't describe having my son Michael here. Uh, number one, I'm divorced and from Michael's mom, and so I was not there to take him to school every day and to pick him up, and I wasn't at every Little League game. I tried my best uh, to be at every possible thing that I could be, uh, but I still have you know, a pit in my stomach knowing that I missed out on stuff. He does a really good job of understanding you know, where we are in our relationship, and uh, I think it's definitely strengthened our relationship. Did you call your mom? Did you call your mom? I think now for Coach Muss, if you think about Michael and him, he's seeing his dad like work so hard. And I think for every dad, that has to leave the home and go work and go on road trips and you're away. You want them to know why you're doing it. It's not like, it's not because of money. It's because you love your job, you're passionate about it, you want to help people. And now the, the even crazier part is that Michael wants to do the job. It's a really great dynamic and, and I think it makes it a fun dynamic. We go to lunch, you know, we have a good time, we tell stories, we listen to stories, we, we crack on each other. And Michael's a big part of that, and he's got a really good basketball mind. I mean, he's a guy that you're going to see someday on the sideline as well. I know how hard it was. What? <laughs> rookie. On the road. The rookie. It's so tough. It is tough. He's going to be a stud in this business, and I think if his name was Michael Smith or Michael Musselman, like he, he'd find a way to make it in this business because he works really hard, he's sharp, He's wise beyond his years. And then as he's getting into the business, there's no job that's too small or too big for him. When I made the decision, um, I think a lot of people warned me because they know he's a tough boss. He's a great boss, but he's really tough on people. He expects a lot. He's not going to let you take any shortcuts. But I think he's been the best boss ever. And I've been here seven months now, and I've learned more than I've learned in my whole entire life about hoops. Now. I'm getting to work with him on a daily